Now, now we will move a bit forward in the timer model. We have modeled till the increment opaque action. So let me recall it. We have the start of the activity, timer activity, then we have a decision node and then we have a delay element then a read self action read self action will read the context ob object a timer in our case a timer object in our case and pass the result through uh, the result pin now this timer object is passed through the result pin to the read structural feature action through its object pin now the read structural feature action reads the value of the initial value variable here in the model explorer which is defined already in the timer block and passes this value through its result pin. This value is passed to the t in value of t in of the opaque action called increment and uh, the incremented value will then pass to the will then pass through its output pin called t out now the incremented value is stored in the t out now we, we we need to use the add structural feature action the add structural feature action basically adds or overrides the value of the structural feature in this model we need the add structural feature action because because we need to override the structural features value the structural feature is initial value variable and we need to update the initial value variable with the incremented value which is currently stored in t out so we need to use the add structural feature action to add the add structural feature action go to the node section of the palette search for the add structural feature action and here it is just drag and dra drop it onto the editor so you can rename it i am not renaming it and using the default name so the add structural feature action needs also needs the timer object so the timer object will be passed to the add structural feature action through its object pin so to create the object pin of the add structural feature value action select the add structural feature value action go to the properties uml tab of properties go to the object section this is the object click on this plus button and then input pin so i am calling it as object and the rest of the things will be taken as default but you can take it according to the scenario according to your need and okay and the input pin has been created so now I need an object flow to pass the timer object to the add structural feature value action through its object pin so for the object flow go to the edges section of the palette select the object flow and drop it onto the fork node from where the and drop it on the object pin of the add structural feature value action again we don't have any guard and uh, weird conditions on this object flow so we can remove it from the properties tab go to the properties and delete the chord and wait okay now the object 
Now the add structure feature value action has a structural feature of it has the same structural feature to that of read structural feature value action. So to add the structural feature, select the add structural feature value action from the editor, go to the properties tab, UML tab of properties and in the structural feature section click on this button and here is the initial value inside the block timer and click ok so the structural feature has been added now it also has a value input pin which accepts the value which accepts the value from T out. So it is an input pin. So I'm not uh, naming it as, so I'm naming it as value. Uh, let's say updated value. Updated value, okay. So this is, just move it to here. Okay, now I need another object flow to pass the T out value to the updated value. Updated value pin. So the, to select the object flow, to create an object flow, go to the edge section of the palette, then object flow, and then from T out to updated value again I do not need any guard and weight condition just go to the properties tab first select this object flow then go to UML tab of the properties and then remove the guard and weight okay now the updated value of the structural feature called initial value of the timer has been passed to the add structural feature value action now the add structural feature action now select all select add structure feature action go to the uml properties tab and select the is replace all is true now by selecting by selecting is replace all is equal to true we what we are actually doing is that we are overriding the value of structural feature that is initial value of timer for example first it is stored in uh, the zero is stored in the initial value variable and after the first iteration the value will be overrided will to one and then after second iteration the value will be overrided to two and after third iteration it will be overrided to three and so on Now the control should also be passed from the increment to the add structural feature value action. Right now the control is here at the opaque action. So I need a control flow to select a control flow, go to the edges section of palette, select a control flow and drop it onto the increment from where you want to start the control flow and drop it onto the read structure value action add structure value action sorry okay now the control has been passed to add structure feature value action the add structure feature value action basically adds a new value which is called updated value to the add structure sorry updated value to the structural feature called initial value and now you can resize this activity okay now we need a decision node 
to check whether the timer maximum condition has been reached or not because we have already defined a variable called timer maximum count which is an integer value in the block definition diagram let me let me go to the block definition here is the block definition diagram we have modeled here is the timer block and there is another variable called timer maximum count so we have to put the condition here now that whether the initial value which is being incremented in the previous steps has been reached to the maximum value or not the maximum value will be timer maximum count the timer maximum count will also be given in the default value where it given a default value in the block definition diagram where it has been defined we have given a default value of select the timer maximum count inside the block go to the properties and see we have given the default value of 3 which means timer maximum count is 3 so now we have to put a condition first of all we need a decision node to select a to add a decision node onto the activity diagram go to the node section of palette then go to the node section inside the node section open it and here is the decision node so drag and drop onto the activity diagram editor mm -hmm. so now we need a control flow select a control flow from the edges of the palette then drop it onto the element from where you want to start the control the control is right now here at add structural feature action so i want to pass the control to the decision node okay now when the timer the initial value hasn't been reached hasn't has not reached to maximum count timer maximum count it will it should repeatedly execute until it reaches to the maximum count so i need a control flow again so from the edges section of the palette select a control flow i want to pass the control from the decision node to the to this decision node okay now this flow has a guard condition that timer that the initial value which is being incremented throughout this these steps has not been yet reached to the timer maximum limit so this has a guard condition called so to add a guard condition that the initial value is less than timer maximum count select this control flow go to the uml tab of the properties here in the guard section click on this button and select the opaque expression now select the language for the opaque expression so you can select any of these languages let's say i'm selecting natural language then click this forward arrow button and then click ok the editor of the natural language has been opened so the condition is that initial value is less than timer max count so if, if the initial value which is being incremented in every iteration is less than timer maximum count which is already given in the 
block definition diagram where we define this timer maximum count variable then it should go back to the start and again increment the initial value until its maximum limit has been reached and the other another flow from the decision node will go to the send signal action we have to use the send signal action the send signal action basically is used to send a signal on a particular port so in our case we are using send signal action because we want to send a signal on the timer port we have already defined in the structure let me go to the structure here is the timer port in traffic lights controller block uh, the timer port is here is the timer port ns green timer and is typed by the signal so we need to send the sig uh, signal on the timer port when the timer reaches its maximum value so first we take we need to take a send signal action for that purpose go to the node section of the palette search for the send signal action it's not directly shown here so open this one here is the send signal action just drag and drop it onto the editor it when you drop it onto the editor a new window will come up asking whether you want to create a signal or whether you want to create a signal or you have already created the signal and select it from here so we have already created the signal in the block definition diagram so browse it from here here is the signal we have created already in the block definition diagram so select this and click ok and ok so resize it remember the name of the send signal action this one should be same with the signal you have already created in the block definition diagram this one these both names should match so this is the name called signal so we have to rename the send signal action to the signal to rename the send signal action select the send signal action go to the uml tab of the properties and rename it to the signal okay okay now to give now to select a port that is on which port the signal should be sent for that purpose select this signal send signal action go to the uml tab of the properties and then on port on port section click this button and then browse for the timer because we need to send the signal on the timer this is an screen timer select this one and select this in a screen timer and click ok now the signal will be sent to the ns green timer port so we need a control flow now for that go to the edges section of the palette select the control flow and I want to pass the control from decision to signal send signal action now this control flow has a guard condition that timer reaches its maximum count so to add this guard condition select this control flow go to the uml tab of the properties here and here is the guard condition select this it will ask you whether you want to write it as a literal boolean integer or whatever let's say i'm selecting opaque expression a new window will come up that asks you for the creation of new opaque expression you have to select the language for new opaque expression 
to select a language for new expression click this plus button next to the language you can select any of these languages uh, let's say I'm selecting natural language and then click this forward arrow button and click OK now the editor of natural language has been opened now the condition here is that initial value is equal to timer max count that is the initial value and click OK that is the initial value that is being incremented in the previous steps has been reached to the maximum count which has already been given in the block definition diagram as a default value okay now any one of these outgoing control flows will be selected according to the god condition if this condition turns out to be true then it will go out go back to the start of the activity and execute this whole process again now you might have understood that why we take this why we took this decision node because we wanted to we wanted to run this activity in a loop unless the condition has been met so this send signal action also needs a this send signal action also needs the timer object so the timer object will be passed to it through its target pin through its target pin to add a target pin select this send signal action go to the uml tab of the properties then select the target here is the target click this plus button it will then ask you whether it is input pin value pin or input pin so we are selecting input pin so i am naming it as target target and okay so let's move it to this position and it all oh, the timer object should be passed and the timer object should be passed to it through this target pin now the timer object is basically here so we need an object flow select the object flow from the edges section of the palette and pass the object timer object from this fork node to the send signal action again i do not need any guard conditions or wait so go to the uml tab of the properties of this control flow and remove guard and wait conditions okay now this send signal action will be passed the will pass the control to the value specification action as we have to now as we have to now reset the counter when it's re reached to the maximum value now we have to set the count reset the counter reset the timer sorry so for that purpose we need a value specification action the value specification action basically is here in the nodes section of palette value specification action here it is just drag and drop it onto the diagram i am using a default name value specification action basically adds the value which you gives it from the uml tab properties here from here whatever value you give it from here it will override this value onto the structural feature the structural feature in our case is the initial value as you can see here in the model explorer so the initial value will be overrided 
now the value uh, the value specification action the value specification action select the value specification action go to the uml properties tab and in the value section click this plus button select literal integer as we have already typed the initial value here as integer so we have to give it an integer value 0 to reset it to reset it we have to give it the def its default value we have select we have set the default value of initial value as 0 so we have to reset it to 0 that's why we are giving the value 0 to the value specification action now value specification action will write the zero value onto the initial value variable we have already defined in that timer block now we need a control flow which passes the control from send signal action to the value specification action for that go to the edge section of palette select the control flow and from the send signal action to value specification action now value specification action will then pass the control to the next through its result pin through its result pin for that purpose select the value specification action go to the uml tab of properties and in the result click this plus button and it will create an output pin I'm not naming it so click OK it will create an output pin now this output pin will basically connected to the will be basically connected to the activity flow final which will basically end this activity so we need an activity flow final so for that go to the node section of the palette and then again this node section and we need activity final drag and drop this onto the palette now this this node will basically terminate all the flow in the activity so now we need the control flow for that go to the edge section of the palette select the control flow and from the output pin of the value specification action to the activity flow final so when this point is reached the flow of the activity will be terminated and the timer will be reset to its default value this is how the timer is modeled in uml activity diagram i hope you have understood understood the timer logic thank you